What the fuck is up? I'm hanging out with my best friend Lilith right now. We did it. Found her in a field of dreams, apparently. Best Zoom background I've ever seen, honestly. You're not even bleeding into it at all. My hair, I can't even do green screens on Zoom. It's just like I'm either bald or I have like a oh, perfectly man. mushroom toad head, which I don't appreciate. <laughs> I'm sure my wife appreciates me not having so many dead ends, but <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. Are you? This is our first time ever even meeting like even in yeah. a camera setting. Yeah, we've talked about how we've been kind of been trolling Facebook for a, a year and a half, two years now. <laughs> and well, uh, Yeah, we've kind of just bonded over, um, I was trying to like pinpoint it. Like, I don't know where it came from. We're both comics at, uh, we're both actually, we're both comics, but we've never done a show together. It must have been, yeah, some sort of trolling thing or our mutual bond and, and hatred of comedy, probably. I personally can't stand comedy. I don't know why I do it, uh, probably because I've been doing it for 14 years, and if I quit now, that would actually be sadder than still doing it. No, no, <laughs> no, no. I quit. I stopped doing it. I was just like, forget this stuff, you know? How? Please teach me how to quit. How did you so walk away? Here's what happened is I started, I started like 20 years ago uh, doing improv and then about four years later, I went to do stand up and I started doing, I started in a town that didn't have a club, didn't have any regular stand up or open mics. What and town so is this? Charlottesville, Virginia. You might've heard of it. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't an open mic. That was <laughs> uh, Yeah. That was the worst open mic we ever ran. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, I just started, uh. I, I said, hey, let's let's do this open mic. There's no other shows in town. Let's make it good. And we, anyone who wanted to could meet. We'd meet on Sundays and we'd work on material and we'd give feedback to each other. And it was like kind of like a vibe that you never really see. I've never seen in other scenes. It's like there's always like the dude who gives your his advice uh, without asking. And you're just like, no one cares. But it was just like, hey, I'm going to present this. Help me make it better. And That's like a drum I've beaten to death. Like maybe yeah. was it virtual writers group? Because my wife and I did uh, a virtual writing group for I've a long time, that, yeah. and uh, we did one here in person, Nebraska, very short term because it it didn't work in Nebraska. They don't know how to write or read. But um, I did always notice that. But one of my speeches that I would kind of give in those things would like I would I used to think like um feedback mics and like things like that they had the wrong like dynamic something like you're describing is more like democratic and stuff because i was like yeah. when you do like a uh, a feedback mic like say let's say you are taking my feedback mic right i yeah. would go me as the assessor i go into it with this mindset of you're wrong i'm right so i'm gonna fix your dog shit so you find these comedians trying to change things that don't need to be chat or change like fiddling with certain things because they just want to say what they wanted to say anyways and it's like you're not making this person's thing better you're just doing whatever you wanted to do yeah so you're i rewriting just writing your own jokes yeah when, con yeah when criticism is only the negatives it's not criticism anymore it's just talking shit because i think criticism needs to be all encompassing you need to be like i like this about it maybe you could say this though instead like change the wording like say yeah. what you actually like about something and say what you don't like about something like actually like critique it like because like sometimes the critique would be like this is perfect you don't actually need to change anything and i think sometimes right. you need to actually hear that out loud because i think that's yeah. why we go to open mics to writing things or it's because we're like well i obviously think it's funny because i wrote it down but i also think it's hack because i thought of it <laughs> and yeah. i'm smart and it, well I everything think... that i think of to me personally seems hack because it's my thought process <laughs> Yeah, everyone thought of that, right? If I if my dumbass thought about it, right? Or like, yeah, else thought it. yeah, yeah. You guys don't think about these things every day, like. I think a lot. One thing that was nice about the way we did that is, and you probably noticed this. You find with so many new comics, they don't know how to how to tell jokes. Like they just start <laughs> talking about crazy shit, and you're like, "What? Do you, what's your premise? What are you making fun of?" And so we do a lot of stuff. Is like, "What are you making fun of?" Because mm. your your joke your joke has like three half done punchlines, but no one in the audience knows what you're joking about. Uh, <laughs> and is the, the funniest have... line about stuff like that. Like uh, you know, like when someone like they get a roast joke done on them, and then they add that to their set, <laughs> or <laughs> like they just, like, or like they just say like I look like blah 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 fuck blah blah blah. Like Ham will always just be like, "What did you do in that joke though?" <laughs> like besides oh, being ugly and like when, when she says that but what did you do it's like oh I just ripped my fucking heart out because it's true like because it's like yeah you're not doing anything but 
I think the problem with comedians, people in general, but comedians mostly, is A, they all think they're like fucking F. Scott Fitzgerald talking about their dick. But two, they kind of want to like, they see themselves as like truth tellers. So they kind of want to recite. I, I know that sounds yeah, like really good, no. but they want to use too much of the truth. They tell yeah. too much of the story. It's like, you should really just stick to the bullet points of what's funny about it. It's like, yeah, but so much more happened in it. Yeah, but it's not funny. So in the bit, yeah. that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. So let's boil it down to like, pretend yeah. telling this to someone like your boss who doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, or it's like it's like get the audience to see the world the way you're seeing it, or let mm. them see what your thought process is, and then you can say all the crazy shit you want. But if you come out just spewing crazy shit, the audience is like, "What do you? What's yeah, your problem, you know? Right? You, they need to see likable Lilith before they get unlikable Lilith. I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a big problem yeah. for me. Is yeah, I you guys like show. dogs? <laughs> Woo! All right. Anyways, let's anyway. Talk about <laughs> well, I think, uh, you know, you talk about that, like everyone's trying to be like, you know, they, they, they see Bill Hicks or they always go to like Carlin and Pryor and, and it's like, you know, for all you say about like, they always say like, oh, well, George, uh, George Carlin challenged people and he spoke. It's like, yeah, but he, he challenged like the right people. He challenged the people who need to be challenged. He wasn't right. like, he wasn't like, we should really murder all gay people. And it's like, no, that's right. right. Challenging the audience. It's like, hmm. They also think like it's their job to challenge the audience when really their job is to be funny. It's it's just like, fun. There's a meme that captures comedy perfectly. It's like a guy, <laughs> it's like two pictures of a guy like in one pose and then doing stand up in another pose. And he's like, hey guys, well, uh, like thanks for coming to the open mic. This is my first time ever doing comedy. Anyways, here's what I think about sexual assault. And it's just like, yeah, let's take on these groundbreaking topics the first time you ever speak out loud in public. Like this is. Yeah. Your- like that's the, yeah they think they're gonna take down like you know the new world <laughs> order on their second set and then like yeah they're like they're like well bill burr talks about his day so i could probably just get up there and like yeah. death grip the mic like a monopoly cane and fucking <laughs> crudge through my fucking day yeah they hold they hold the mic by the by the actual mic part like they're a rapper yeah. and they're just like spitting into it I have one well, guy he's getting funny. into it, so who knows? I mean, everyone getting into it. That's when I knew it was time to leave. It's just like people getting in line and like doing free shows at like the Funny Bone to like maybe open it. And then the Funny Bone's headliners like Mick Foley and uh, Val Kilmer headline. And it's like, yeah, wh- why, why are you trying to write your pissy little jokes when people, people pay 30 bucks to watch anyone who's moderately famous talk? People act like Tom Brady starting comedy now or all these things. Like, this hasn't been going on since like comedy itself like and like i've joked forever i would love to just get famous doing something else so i can fall back on comedy <laughs> like you know i'm gonna right. go on tour right i remember like 2011 just walking down the street in new york city chelsea gotham comedy club not performing just walking by Tonight, one night only, Vinny from Jersey Shore. That's when I knew. This was like <laughs> before the situation was even like, he might have done that Comedy Central roast, but it was still like, that ain't you, bro. That's Vinny. That's someone else. Like, Paul, DJ Paulie D's, like, he's oh, doing gigs man. in Rhode Island again. Like, everything's the way it should be. What's the fuck? This motherfucker's at Gotham. Like, he doesn't do comedy anymore. But that's crazy. Yeah, it's just like, you know comedy clubs aren't comedy they're like restaurants where comedy is the reason you go and you really just go in if you'll pay to see anyone if you'll pay to see anyone then that's who they'll have on stage and it doesn't matter if it's someone who's crafting perfect jokes or if it's some guy in a reality tv show who shit his pants and now he just talks about that time he shit his pants on the reality show i would pay 30 bucks for jake roberts to just cut wrestling promos on the entire audience and just like Everyone lines up, gets on stage, and Jake Roberts cuts a Stone Cold promo on him. They get off, yeah. next person comes on. Yeah, I'd pay to see that, honestly. I'd pay 30 bucks just to watch him shit his pants at this point. I'd be like, ooh, he's not doing too good, huh? He's not He's not shitting his pants anymore. He's, he's, uh, he's good. He, we'll get Scott Hall, you know, then. We'll get somebody. <laughs> we'll get somebody that I, that could produce. <laughs> all those guys are healed. DDP healed them all with his yoga. Really? Yeah, that was that was something yeah. I never thought I'd see in my lifetime, because when I was a kid and DDP was on TV, I thought he was like 55. He looked rough. <laughs> he looked like a biker meth 55. You find out he's like 28 in those. And now he's like actually 55. And he like 
he looks exactly like DDP, like got clean and like got hardcore into yoga. It's like, it's like if I had to typecast, I'd be like, yeah, that guy, the guy looks like DDP yeah. who found out co- what kombucha was. You'd, you'd cast him as a young DDP now. Yeah, it's right. crazy. <laughs> the flashback scene where he's just going like this and they're like, what was that? And he's like, oh, no, just, just thought it was going to be fun. I just felt like doing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So how I quit comedy. So I yeah, right? uh, I got to like I got like 2018. It was like 10 years later. And uh, the reason I got and this always blew people's mind. They're like, why'd you get stage and for five minutes, everyone has to listen to me. And, right. uh, you know, I like it when they laugh, but if they don't laugh, I just want to say what I want to say. And I just didn't want to do that anymore. And I stopped going and people were like, oh, you're so good at it. I'm like, I don't feel like I'm good at it. Like, I think the but fact if you're not that enjoying it, it yeah, it if becomes, you're not enjoying it, don't do it. Yeah. It becomes daunting. It becomes like tiresome. Like I think often about, um, I've told this a million times, not on this show or like to you because we've never talked before, but, um, uh, <laughs> I think about comedy now, and I think about when I was a teenager. I had this pot dealer. uh, He lived down the street from me. He, his full time job, he just played poker online and sold weed. And I remember like visiting him, and he was just playing poker like online, and he looked frustrated. It was like the first time I ever seen like him frustrated playing it because I was like, "Damn, this dude just like literally gets high in a hoodie all day and just makes bank." And I was like, "What's going on, dude? Like having a making some bank?" And he's just like man, I hate this shit. And I was like, why, dude? You have it made. And I remember he just starts having this like, it's like, no, because if I fucking lose poker, I don't have rent. I don't have my fucking thing. I don't have that. I don't have that. And over the years as comedy kind of, you know, got more successful for me. And I was like, well, I don't think I need to work at uh, Burger King anymore. I think I could just, you know, do this thing. I'm like, Uh, if I don't go to this fucking chuckle hut and make goddamn fucking eight people not cry, then I don't have my rent. <laughs> I don't have the, my Hulu bill so I can steal jokes from other comedians that are worse than me, you know? Right. Oh, just go to Reddit like Dave Chappelle does. <laughs> I've been talking about that. I, I don't know if you know him. Glenn Tickle. I just did an interview with him. He's very funny. He has specials yeah. and stuff. But we talked at length. And Ham brought this up to me, too. The disconnect of rich comedians not realizing what is just an open mic joke that everyone does. Like when I was watching the yeah. Rock special, it was the abortion punch card joke. I was like, yeah. wow, if only you just hit a few mics at like <laughs> Grove 34 before you <laughs> went and recorded that or something, Chris. It's just down the street, buddy. You know, um, yeah. same with Chappelle. Chappelle, that's been like, like how many specials at this point? Like Reddit jokes or just like, I just think because it's like, damn, y'all don't doom scroll anymore, do you? You don't look at existential shit because you're not scared anymore. You're yeah. happy and you have money and security and you have children so your legacy secure and just, ugh, blah, yeah, you don't want it. <laughs> I have and that's money. the kind of stuff like we would talk about when we would do these, these meetings. Like someone would say a joke and we'd be like, I mean, that's kind of funny, but five of us thought about that punchline while you were telling the joke. And it's yeah. like, well, there was one guy who was always like, write, write 10 punchlines. And the 10th one you write is going to be like unique to you. And it's going to be hard work. And I don't yeah. think a lot of people want to do hard work. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's hard work and it's like really, really digging. But if you get to that 10th punchline, no one stole that joke from you. Like you came up with that on your own. It's like, uh, uh, George Lopez said, uh, Carlos Mencia stole a joke from him and it was like, yeah, what's up with Taco Bell's Enchirito? It's like an enchilada fucked a burrito. It's like every comic wrote that the first time they heard the word Enchirito. Yeah. Like no one stole that from you. Yeah. Like that's Well, that's I just think he stole writing. like 10 straight minutes from George Lopez. I think it was a little more like, I mean, he, yeah, like those are like, I had, I remember like I made a, I don't even remember what it was. It was like, I just said like a phrase yeah. It was just like in passing and someone was like, hey, man, that's like a punchline to my joke. And I'm like, right. It's just a sentence I said. It, it, it wasn't funny. Yeah. It's just like in a, I don't even remember what it was. But I remember like looking at him like. Like, what do you like? I, he's like approaching me and I, I could tell he's like trying to say something I'm like what is happening? And he's like, I want you to stop doing that line. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, first of all, I wrote mine first. So it was like funny. But I was also like. Just like I literally just remember being like, 
okay, I don't like literally my joke's not dependent on it. So I'll do it. And I did. And the joke was better actually. But I was like, damn, like people are so, I don't know. We've had like, we do like writing sessions and with the writers mm-hmm. group and stuff, you know, we've helped develop a few uh, comedians, like uh, some comedians, like we we've, we've helped a lot, my wife and I and stuff. Uh, I've seen some comedians like with that. We don't even talk to anymore, but like 90% of their sets are like, from the group or whatever and that makes me happy yeah. too the people that like stay with it and stuff but it's also like a can you not think of anything but two like <laughs> this is proof in the product of like the group mentality and having all that feedback actually is that helpful because you get these like bulletproof jokes yeah, like, yeah i hate this person but it's like we did write really good jokes for them yeah so. i think the other the other problem that stems from that is you know that comic ego there's nothing i hate oh, worse than like sitting around with people and be like oh that joke they told they got over i wrote that for them it's like i do that do shit. yeah i do shit like that because <laughs> i'm proud of myself you know you if just I had let to, it go you're like i mean i, I do I, that i offered to help them and and they got they got a good joke out of it <laughs> and that, that's all on them i do that after my set too i go thanks i wrote all the, i do so I wrote drunk, that. Some drunk guy came up to me last night at karaoke and goes, "Hey, dude, really like your hair." And I went, "Thanks, screw it myself." <laughs> and uh, literally, it's just like one of my go tos. I, 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 I will admit that I am guilty of that. But it's like some. It's like literally though. Like especially like if I helped a comic with something, like we wrote on it. Like they're like, I really just need help crafting this bit or whatever. Not that I'm like the end all be all, but it really does help having like someone, even like another set of eyes and ears. Even if they don't help you, I've had just me saying something to another comedian, yeah. and then I just figured it out. I was like, oh, just saying it to you. I, you know what? Fuck you. You were useless. Thank you though. Yeah. You no, know? but like, I. Uh, you should mention your dick. <laughs> that that's the other thing but i kind of get like a proud like soccer dad like i'll be sitting next to you know him my wife sorry i keep like using both interchangeably i forget you like know her sometimes but like i'll like squeeze her leg and be like that joke and she's like no that's i know but, like, that's fine <laughs> it's more like sitting around with like a bunch of other comics and that person's not there and going i wrote that joke for them it's like oh uh, just- i only do it when it's people i hate and then people compliment the joke i go well just so you know just so you know I hate that person, and I hate that person, and I wrote that joke. That I'm not gonna lie. Also, something I do. (laughs) I come in with a little cane, like just so you know, and I tap it on the ground and hold it up. Oh, I I like that that. joke, and she's a bitch. That's a good power move. He's a tool. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I had a. This is my claim to fame. I wrote with a comedian one time, and they were doing all jokes that we had worked on together, and then the one that bombed. He yelled out, Brian wrote that one. <laughs> so, like that. That's, yeah, <laughs> I think that's the appropriate way to handle all those things. It just goes, Brian wrote that. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So you did it for like 10 years, then you got out, but then you get back in, proving that this is a disgusting no. fiction. No, 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 no. First okay, of all, you wanted uh, to. this person asked me to do a show and I did it last night and but did it feel did they, good to do comedy again? How long in it been? I, I mean, I, I, I still do improv. I have my one person improv show. I did that in August at a festival, but I haven't been on stage since then. And yeah. so, I mean, it was fine. It's just like, it, it doesn't like beforehand. I was just like, uh, dragging myself there and it was fine being on stage and, and it was a good show. Like no one, you know, there was the one guy who, who had to mention nine 11. And uh, aside from that, you know, um, and no one else kind of talked about 9-11 or sexual assault, so it was positive. Um, 9-11's it was pretty show. tame at this point. I mean, it's pretty much, you know. Are there any hot takes left? It's two decades ago. Yeah. Like, get over it. Like, yeah. Man, I would love to hear about... the newest hot take that just thinks Al-Qaeda did it still. <laughs> like, yeah, fuck yeah, it. It's an inside like, job. Al- like, Al-Qaeda Osama bin Laden, it. right? Like, <laughs> he, like, <laughs> just believes that. <laughs> Please, yeah. Obama did it. That's why he sat in the Oval Office the entire time the towers fell. God. God. How many times did you see that? You know what's uh-huh. funny? I was actually thinking about that. I kind of miss Trump sometimes, but like, you know, obviously I don't with like whatever is coming around the corner with this next election is going to be definitely worse. But I remember when Biden and Trump were running against each other, obviously I was going to go pro Biden, even though I didn't want to vote for Biden, but I was like, I hate Trump that much that I'm going to go for it. I was trolling this entire town, Colchester, Connecticut, population of like 14,000. I had like, I couldn't even go to this town and say I was Brian barbecue without getting like 
fucked up. Like I was trolling them that hard, but I um I didn't realize how clairvoyant I was being. I did uh they were doing these like drive-by events because uh remember when Trump did like the boat parade and they said yeah. that happened right yeah. down the this is like right that's where I lived. That's that's this. So I go, I made a Facebook event of I'm gonna do the Joe Biden hot air balloon race <laughs> where I claimed that there was ten thousand hot air balloons in the sky over Colchester and it blocked out the sun for 45 minutes. And I lived and died by this. I argued with people for hours, days, weeks about it. They're like, that never happened. I'm like, yes, it did. Had I known Biden and balloons were going to be such a big issue <laughs> three years later. <laughs> three later, you called it. I can't believe it. I'm just so <laughs> on point with this shit. I'm like, yeah, hot air balloons are going to be fucking back, baby. I got this shit. Yeah, Joe Biden's hot air balloons. That's how he wants to travel. It's like, if he can't do railroads, he wants to do hot air balloons. <laughs> oh, man, one just derailed like right before we started talking. In Alabama, one is like, yeah, yeah. we just need, uh, you know, we need less regulations in these red states. It's just well, like turn them into toxic swamps. Please, you know? no, I can't. <laughs> oh, yeah, Nebraska is so fucked right now. We we have trains derail uh, in the middle of our state all the time. Apparently, how did you how did you end up in Nebraska? There's the question we all want to know. I've anytime people ask, this is the answer I give. It's the truth. It's a combination platter of a lot of things. You know, we we okay. I'm from Connecticut. My wife is not, so she had no allegiance to Connecticut when we lived there. Uh, she's like, I want to leave. I was like, yeah, same. This place sucks. So we wanted to live somewhere cheaper. You you add in like uh, a midlife crisis on top of that. Boom. Oh, yeah. You get uh, this place. Uh, on paper, it seemed good, you know, because like Lincoln itself is a blueberry and a cherry pie, so to speak. Sure. You know, liber sure. it's very, you know, li it's still Nebraska. I, I learned that quick, you know, an economy is not uh, corn husker football, but whatever. Here we are, uh, you know, but it was a lot of things. It was like mostly like the price point in a lot of ways and just like sort of like, you know, like I had never even been there. So it was like, fuck it. I, you know. I love traveling and shit. So we were just like, let's take this leap of faith. And like, yeah. there's a lot of things I do like about here, but I am so ready to leave. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. And like, you want to talk about like fucking goddamn like conservative cesspools, like right oh, now, yeah. like this state in particular is trying to overturn every, I mean, okay. You get Roe v. Wade gets Everything. overturned. There's a huge protest here, which I was actually nice to see i was like yeah. good look at all these angry women this will show the pig farmer governor literally he was a pig farmer now he's the governor <laughs> never even debated anyone he just got no, picked I... by the this is how fucked it is the last <laughs> governor basically picked this dude now he's the governor then some senator just dropped out so the governor had to appoint a new sent like a stick like a u.s senator. and guess who he picked the governor <laughs> that fucking picked him <laughs> Hey, so we have this whole fuck thing. So Roe v. Wade gets overturned. Now they're like, let's restrict abortions to six weeks. Is that cool? Oh Everyone's God. all mad about it. You know, civilian wise, you know, it's a woman yeah. who introduced it. I mean, I think it is. I thought it was Gene Simmons when I looked at the picture, but it's a woman. <laughs> So either way, they're and they're trying to add all like I I read like the minutes of like the town hall meetings on these things. And one time they had a meeting just to change a semicolon in it to a period. And I was so mad. I was like, How are you gonna talk about abortion and use the word period right now? But either oh, way, it's like that yeah, see, I'm, I'm yeah. out here, Lilith. I got yeah, this. Yeah, you're but doing it. You're working it. At I the like same it. time, they're like, all right, let's table this abortion thing. Should we get rid of concealed carry permits? That's good, right? Like, they don't yeah. see any irony in that. They're like, let's do it. And they're just, they just keep introducing new laws that are just, like, every day there's something. And it's just, it's really, like, surprising. Like, you know, so now it's like, we're like, well, I want to, because, you know, when they overturned Roe v. Wade, like, they were like, well, at least Nebraska, it's fine. And then they immediately try and do it. So there it's like, go. now it's like, well, some of the perks of living here have kind of, like, gone away. Also, I would love, love to smoke good weed again. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have some good weed in my life. Like I get good weed, but it's a rarity. It's not a rare. Yeah. Like getting weed is hard. It's not easy in Nebraska. It's not legal in Nebraska. I'm in the most landlocked state, so like now the closest option I have to literally go to a legal dispensary, and this is just recent. This happened is three hours away. 
in Kansas City, Missouri. In Kansas City. Okay, yeah. Uh, Missouri. I'm, I'm, if I yeah. want an abortion, I got to go to the Kansas side still. You got to go to Kansas for your abortions. Mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm originally from Milwaukee and spent like six years living in Missouri. And yeah, it's like. Really? Yeah. And We're in Missouri, to, if you don't mind me Colum- asking. Columbia at the university. I like Columbia, I, actually. I spent six years there. I prefer- Columbia is weird. All the Walmart, all the Walmart people live there, like the rich Walmart people. Oh, it's, it's very strange. Like Stan Kroenke, who owns like, yeah, it's like four, it's like four baseball nice. teams or something. Yeah, a lot of brick it's buildings. Kind of, like a downtown's got a lot of like nice. Sh- I remember like there's like a bar that had like a rave going on at like the top floor, and I was yeah. like, what's going on in there? You know what I'm talking about? I know that downtown area. It's like yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's like Main Street USA in some small town. Yeah, it really yeah. it really is, but it's like not shitty. Because yeah, like it, I don't know if anyone knows this, Missouri is a state. Not good. Uh, my brother lived in Joplin for a little while. Oh. I don't know why. I mean, he lived in a, like, he was, like, squatting in, like, an abandoned house. Like, he was 18. Yeah. I don't know. But I think St. Louis is, like, one of the worst cities I've ever been to. Uh, what? I love St. Sorry. Louis. Sorry. Yeah, you, can, okay. you can keep your arches. I've I, never performed there, so I don't know what the what the scene is. I've only, like. Oh, I've, well, that's the, probably the part I have the problem with, I guess. But like, uh, where else? I've been like all over that state. That state just like has so many weird mysteries. Like, I st- I had to sleep in a hotel in Hannibal, Missouri, sure, one, which is that's the where, birthplace uh, of Mark Twain. Mark Twain, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm from Hartford, which is where the Mark Twain house is. So he oh, moved from there to Whalers. Oh shit! No way. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I've been to a oh, whaler. This, this is like, Did you wear that for like me? The greatest. No, this is just the top, but that's like the greatest logo in sports history. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the whalers yeah. were. Uh, it was nice to just have an actual professional anything in Connecticut. <laughs> if I'm being honest. Yeah. Because now it's gone. Are... You guys can't have nice things. Well, we have professional wrestling. The WWE is never going to leave Connecticut. Um, oh, yeah. Thank God. That's the one thing we have on lock. We have A and E, uh, WWE, and like all like the daytime like bullshit shows like uh, Steve Wilkos and stuff like that. Jerry Springer, <laughs> Doctor Oz, all that shit's in Stanford. <laughs> so, is there a reason? <laughs> is there a reason all that stuff's in Connecticut? Most people that work in New York City are probably from Connecticut or literally uh, commute ah. like every day. So stan like um you know like there's like uh the fuck is the railroad Amtrak, but then there's also Metro North, which just goes from New Haven, Connecticut, yeah. um to uh, Grand Central Terminal. So you can hit that like along the line. So if you're in Stanford, that's like basically the line. You're you're it's like if you go to stanford connecticut you'd be like who tried to like make new york city (laughs) in minecraft like that's what it looks like it's like (laughs) it's like the nicest mcdonald's play place i've ever been to it's like it's got like it's like a very big copycat vibe so like it's like on the lines, yeah. we're still in Connecticut, and it's past Bridgeport, which is scary as fuck. Like Bridgeport is like, yeah, well, I've heard that. Yeah, you want to live in Connecticut for a dollar? There you go, bro. Like you got it. <laughs> but like, yeah. <laughs> so any, as long as you're on that that the Metro North line, you're pretty much golden of like access accessibility to New York City. I mean, that's why I liked living in Connecticut for as long as I did, especially for comedy. Even being Central Connecticut, yeah. I was ninety minutes to New York City or Boston, so it's like cool. And like now, I kind of have like a similar vibe. Like Lincoln's obviously not popping. Uh, I'll die before I go to Omaha, even though I have a show there tonight. Uh, but like basically now, I kind of like book and live in this like three hour triangle for comedy. So it'd be like you know, if Lincoln's here yeah. and Omaha's here, I'll go like to Sioux Falls, Sioux City, uh, Des Moines. Kansas City, there's nothing over here. You know, like you just go if you just go west into Nebraska, there you're not gonna. I mean, there's comedy, but yeah. it's not anything you want to do. 
Like there's a show in Upland, yeah. Nebraska, me... and the town's population is 150. And I've Googled venues that seat 150 in Upland, Nebraska. I'm like, what if I can get the whole town? Just get the whole up. town to come up. Yeah, bring everybody. Come on. Let me ask you a question then. Uh, yeah. cause this came up in, in one of those groups that we would troll. That one where you're uh let's let's be comics, like let's let's pretend we've been a comic for 30 oh, days. Oh, a group where we pretend new- to be comedians have been doing comedy for a month. Yeah. <laughs> and someone was in there and the one joke is always like, When do we start getting paid for this? Oh my and, god. Like I would always uh, seriously, like I did I did my fir- the third time I did stand up is a show I booked myself. I did an hour. I made 90 bucks. It wasn't my best set, obviously, because uh, I wrote it all, didn't have an open mic to try it out on, so I was basically just, like, writing and, yeah. like, practicing it. And I always say, like, just go out and do your own shows. And someone in that group was like, well, I don't want to be performing for, like, an old folks home and getting paid in soup. And all I could think is, like, man, you must really suck as a comic if that's the best you can do. So yeah. I ask you, because you're out in the middle of nowhere, are you, like, doing comedy clubs? Do you, like, contacting bars and booking your own shows? I mean, I've always been like that. Um, yeah. I, uh, back in like CT, like, so, um, before I got with Ham, I was kind of like a big road dog. Like, I ran like a few things, but I was more like, I'm going to tour and just do a bunch of shit. Yeah. I, me, and my wife, she's a better comic than me. So, uh, I, I decided to reel it in a little bit. I'm like, maybe she, she <laughs> should be doing bigger things and I could just be like, no, but I was like, more so, like, I, I don't want to tour anymore. I, I love her. I don't want to be apart from her. I don't want to tour either. And, um, yeah. it gets, you know, I'm, like, sleeping in cars and shit. Like, she's not going to want to do that sort of shit. Like, you know, stuff like that. But I was more like, I can apply what I've learned now and just start running shit all around here. So, like, in New England and, like, even a little further, I was, like, running, like, 40 venues at once at one point like just like a monopoly and i felt good i was having a good time the pandemic happens um we kind of just gripped into like virtual shit and doing like yard things because like we were just doing a bunch of private events once things opened back up and that was like really good too because we were actually having better numbers and fucking up some of the comedy clubs because we didn't have to pay staff or have like restrictions with uh you know dave's birthday party in his yard or whatever (laughs) right it was like we were kind of like doing really well but then we moved here and there's just not like it's a bigger city but the sustainability is just not there and it's just there's a few factors a lot there's not that many bars believe it or not Uh the bars that do want to do it they they're not as much receptive as like you know, back home where I could just, like, send, like, a really, like, articulate, like, message, kind of like a proof of product and, like, sort of like a spiel and then talk to the person. They're more so here to be like, well, this comic gets drunk in this bar every night, so I'm going to let him run an open mic. Like, they're very, like, I don't know you, so I'm not going to talk with you. (laughs) Right. They're not business savvy. Yeah, yeah, And plus, anyone that gets an opportunity here, they just start an open mic and not a show. So it's like, well, we're never getting paid. So the thing is, too, though, there's only, like, and I mean this, like, not even to be hyperbolic, like, 15 comedians here. So if you do run a show, like, I ran a weekly show for, like, the first six months I lived here. I ran out of people to book if it wasn't a touring act, like, the second show. Yeah. Because of those absolutely. 15, I mean, how many of them are even bookable? <laughs> you know, not all of them. Yeah. So, like, you know, I was slim pickings, but, like, it is what it is. So that's been kind of, like, the weird thing. So, But, like, now we do run things here, like, but they're um, not as, like, many as we used to. Like, I'm not running, like, 40 venues, but, like, now we have, like, a good thing with, like, one bar, but we do, like, multiple things at it. Like, yeah, I yeah, do yeah. karaoke there, uh, you know, we do painting events there and we do a comedy show there because here too, like for whatever reason, the few venues that do do comedy, there's no uh, moving here. There's things I've never know, like that I've never seen in comedy in like my almost 15 years, like straight up, like one, the open mics, the host lets you sign up. This is, I've never seen this anywhere, but Lincoln, you sign up. And then the host takes that list and makes their own list with it. Like whatever order they want of just preference. Like I hate this person. So they're last. I hate this person. So they're first. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I kind of liked it at first, but then when people started visiting me and saying it was fucked up, I realized it's fucked up. Now that everyone hates me, I think it's fucked up. So it's like, so what? Usually it's just like you first signed up. You're the first one to go. Second sign up. You're the second one to go. Not even if you signed up first, you could still go last. The person hates you that much. I'm saying, how are you? How do you usually do it? 
Yeah, like that. Or if like you're going to rig it, do it in more of like a New York, like not so upfront way, like where you put it in a bucket and just pull your friends' names yeah. unbeknownst to me, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, an easier way, like a, a, a gentleman way. That's yeah. the thing is my mentality, like the mentalities out here are just different. They are very passive aggressive out here as whereas, you know, an East Coast person like me, very upfront. We both see the other side as rude because of that. Yeah. So it, 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 and that's, you know, just in general generalities. But um, what what's the other thing? They they take the open mic list and um, shit. There was another thing that I hate about comedy here. I don't know. There's just so many. That's of okay. Them. Hey, that's cool. I but mean, it's just, I, yeah, I get it. Oh, that like I don't know. There was always like a mentality that like if someone runs a show that at a place, you don't run a show at that place, or you ask that person. But like, there's yeah. only a few venues that do comedy, so like multiple people run comedy shows at like yeah. every venue so like even my place right now there's someone doing their shitty show at it today yeah it's like hopefully it doesn't affect mine not, like, so, so did you have like yeah. a, like things like that well yeah you don't want you don't want someone coming to the show and like see an absolute garbage and be like oh i saw a comedy show at that venue and their show yeah. suck and then they're not coming to your show i always yeah, say um that's kind of like at least thankfully that a lot of the people do that like hacky thing where all their shows have like fucking names at least like yeah. they're not just called comedy show it's called like you know the dipshit raffle hour or whatever the <laughs> fuck like you know there's some <laughs> sort of thing yeah but so at least there's that so like but yeah it's like i've never seen it like that because like i remember like people being like you poached my venue like back in Connecticut. it's like no you haven't ran a show there in five years and i decided to do a one-off you know yeah and people are like oh yeah i do one i you know it's it I, again these are only the differences i've noticed in nebraska like i've never seen that like that would not fly yeah and, and also there's like we did weekend open mics out here which is like literally against the law back home like <laughs> Literally, I swear to God, yeah, it's it, like in New we England, if you, to on a, the if you start a weekend open mic in New England, comedians would message you until you stopped. They would like, like troll you because it's like you're taking money. Like those are money nights. You don't do a mic on a Friday yeah. or Saturday. That's a show. You're, yeah. you're devaluing all of comedy. So it's like, yeah, I get yeah. that. But we like, used to, when I was in Charlottesville, yeah, Charlottesville is like 40,000 people. And like I said, it not not many venues. And it would kind of annoy me like when I do something. And there was one other group that started doing stand-up. I was like, if you guys want to cross promote or something, or just be in touch so like we're not running shows back to back nights in the same mm -hmm. venue, like I don't care about all this other shit. Like you run your own shows, I don't care. But I'm more than happy to like mention your shows at our shows. If you want to mention our shows at your shows, if you want to just like like I said, just don't run the shows like back to back nights at the same venue. And they, I, like, we had to do that shit it. here before. Like yeah, we were running shows like right down the street from each other on the same night, and people were getting pissed at us, like the venues. And I'm like, I don't want to do them on the same night, but that's the only like offers I'm getting yeah. and stuff. And then like also like it's funny, like one venue we were running at something here, they actually didn't like it if we would promote anyone else's shit, which I oh. actually agreed with, but like I had already kind of turned into this Nebraska mentality. So I was like, what's the big deal? But I remember back in Connecticut specifically, all, all I had a show down the street from another show. They weren't even on the same day. It was just weird enough that they were just on the same street at this point. And the comic came yeah. to my show and asked if he could put flyers on the tables for his show. And I freaked the fuck out on him. I took his handful oh. of flyers and threw them out the door. I was like, can there, you oh see those real quick? Like... <laughs> There was this guy in Charlottesville. Um, he was on the board of this theater that had been renovated and they would do shit there. And he had, have you ever heard, this is the comic, this comic headlined every show he did, Funny Man Skiba. What is it? Funny Man see, what? That, Skiba, S-K-I-B-A. And so a couple times a year, he'd have a big United Nations of Comedy show at the Paramount Theater. And he would come, he would come to my open mics or one time I opened for Tignataro and he was outside the venue after the show handing up flyers for his stuff. And it was just so weird. It's like, you're like, a, you're like a board of directors of a million dollar organization. Like, why are you hanging around outside at like 1030 at night handing Gotta out flyers? Gotta get the street team going. Gotta get oh, he started booking more local shows and um, he would, he would give the comics notes afterwards Ooh, and there was one he was i forget what the comic said but it was like you can't say that word in my venue and it's like what are you talking about 
Oh my god! And, or he wouldn't pay people if he didn't like their. Sh- oh my god! Yeah, it was it was a mess. I would. He, love... he like didn't pay someone. He had. I'd love to watch me. Yeah, work he canceled my open mic once. Really? Oh, I know. I I just I gave it up. Well, I was um, there was a venue we would do one show a month there, and then he booked uh he booked a traveling show there. And he told them they couldn't have any other shows within two weeks of his show. And so they emailed me and was like, we're told we can't have your open mic that night. And so I posted in the in our, our comedy Facebook group and I tagged him in it. I said, hey, this guy's got a show coming up. And he says, uh, they, they, we can't have to do our open mic there this week. And he got like really mad about it. <laughs> And it was it was the funniest thing ever. I mean, he just, what he you, was just what so supposed pissed. to do? I mean, I I just I would have done people, exactly I said, what you we, did. We're not having the show. I would have done exactly what yeah. you did, but worse. I would have like tagged him, dragged him, and then be like, "So I'm going to do the mic at my house at the same time of his show." Oh, we did it. Like, we did it at the petty. church on the campus of the university. Yeah, we did. It, the University of Virginia has a church in the middle of campus, and we got permission to do it at the church on the altar. So we basically stood at the front of the church and, oh, uh, and had an open mine. mic. <laughs> that's a dream of mine. Yeah, honestly, like great. we've been looking at because we we are uh, planning on moving. Uh, we've been looking at spaces and like I'm, if you have like a dream, like a uh, like a uh, I don't know housing situation. I've always been fat and uh, yeah. infatuated with like people that like get like old churches and then like convert them into like. Yeah. things and i'd be like wouldn't it be great to like convert a church into like a like you know you live there but also like a venue <laughs> i'm like i probably wouldn't space, even yeah. change anything I, like just get rid of like the cross <laughs> like keep all that stained glass <laughs> keep the pews make everyone feel real fucking oh weird. definitely keep the stained glass yeah yeah be like no, definitely do that. I, I mean i can't like do like the the church you know because joey diaz or whatever but i'll think of something and i came close this yeah. building that we live in now is a is a old synagogue so like each yeah. uh, unit is like unique and like the one we live in is the choir loft that's why this weird rail oh, cool. behind me because it's like where that they explains sing that. above everybody <laughs> yeah yeah, my other my my thing was always, man, it'd be great to have like a farmhouse with a barn and then just renovate the barn into a performance space. Except yeah. you probably oh don't have God. enough. If you have a barn, if you have a farm, you probably don't have enough people in the neighborhood to like come yeah, out. We've and been fill looking up a at some places. It had yeah. a it was a house and then it had its own um uh, like like what you said, but it had an apartment in it too. So it's like you could fucking yeah. technically live in the apartment in the barn and then rent the house out or whatever. And I was like <laughs> you know like yeah. that's like our dream i think ham and i's our main dream has been it's changed a few times over the years but like it's mostly was like we wanted to get like buy a house uh maybe you have like a kiddo and then once that kiddo is like you know walking and stuff then like get in the rv get uh, like you know have some yeah. rv hookups on the property rent the house out then start like you know doing the nomadic mad max lifestyle because you know the world probably be fucked at that point anyways but like either way oh, already yeah. anytime like you know we, we want to like cool off like we whoever the tenant of the house is like you know the agreement is like hey man we got we it's our property we're gonna be your neighbors you know we're on the lawn today we're, we're coming home we're on the hookups you know where we're on the property or like you know maybe like we want the house back or whatever it's like a worked in situation you know what i mean but like either way yeah. that would be like ideal for us get the kid get the kid doing stand up and then make it like a family stand up show and like the kid opens up he mc's the whole thing yeah i think it'd be you, great you don't think work. you're the first person to pitch that i think my get him working on would his, love that more get than him working on some crowd work yeah i love oh, it oh ham and i know if we <laughs> our kids are going to be like the <laughs> biggest like because your, your kids are always like the opposite of you so if both your parents are like fucking artsy like dickhead <laughs> comedians you're gonna like our kid is literally gonna be like the ceo of mcdonald's or something like just something <laughs> so fucked like he's gonna be like oh yeah i'm the i uh i merged halliburton and fucking raytheon together i'm yeah i brought back enron i did it all <laughs> i yeah i i bailed out enron <laughs> Yeah, that shit's back. No, I, I, yeah, I get it. But, uh, I mean, my, my thing is like, we were always thinking about moving to Vermont for something like that. But now I got to seriously consider like, is it time to get out of the country before the shit gets too bad here? That's what I was uh, talking about with Glenn yeah. Tickle, even. He's trying to get his yeah. Hungarian citizenship. I was like, wow, that doesn't even uh, sound like a better option. Honestly. Yeah. I mean, 
my place that I work for does stuff all over the globe. So I'm going to see if they'll get me like a work visa in Canada or the Netherlands. That's amazing. Actually, yeah. I learned this too. Um, Canada, they have like jobs they need like in the country, like it's on this big yeah. list. And one of the jobs that they desperately need apparently for their economy is comedy. Yes. <laughs> Which if you got, it would just go crazy to be like, wow, poor just for laughs. <laughs> How like, awful please. would it be to like move to a country and then hate doing stand up, but having to stay a stand up because if not, they're going to send you back to the genocide in your home country. <laughs> like if you quit being a stand up, we're sending you back to to over the border. We're gonna what a paradox, in, huh? Yeah, we're gonna drop you off in Tennessee. I know a luck. comedian that's kind of like in a situation like that. He um. Uh, he escaped Yemen, yeah. Like, and he's in Cyprus, I think, right now. Okay, he's in the process of getting his Canadian citizenship. Uh, but he's thinking about just skipping that and going right to America. And I was like, don't. Mm -hmm. And like, and, and I'm not trying to to downplay this person or anything. I actually like have nothing but respect for this person because like I learned this about this person. I, I know this is going to sound like I'm making fun of them because you know who I am, but I'm not. This person oh, yeah. found out about comedy because of the Joe Rogan experience. And nice. like, and I know that that's kind of fucked in and of itself because that's like a, a skewed way to find out about comedy. Can you imagine though <laughs> being in Yemen and not even until you escape, understand that like, stand-up comedy is even like a concept let alone like an obtainable thing so like he got into comedy like escaping yemen you know what i mean so now and like his jokes definitely yeah. reflect that but it's like you know what i mean it's like i can't yeah. imagine so it's like you're describing yeah. that exact situation it's like i don't know comedy's pretty terrible though <laughs> like yeah, yeah right i'm, I'm still like yeah. i don't know i'll probably go back to yemen <laughs> Like leaving leaving Yemen out of like Yemen is Joe Rogan fucking his stool, and you're just like, holy shit, this is what America's like. I gotta get there. Yeah, I gotta get there. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of like what I'm thinking, and it's like, um, it's, yeah, we actually kind of like a little bit of a falling out because I said Joe Rogan wasn't funny, and I didn't think about how. Well, I didn't think about how high yeah. this person had him on like a pedestal. Like this person was like a you know. That's like an epiphany to like realize yeah. that like something even exists. Like, can you like I mean, God, like, let alone like stand up comedy, a podcast, and then his podcast. Talk about the ultimate like visualization of freedom of speech without <laughs> consequences. Yeah. Jesus Christ, Joe Rogan. Yeah. You can't yeah. He's getting even more money now from Spotify. They're like, remember when he said the N-word bunch? We're like, all right, we'll give him two hundred million. All right, we'll give you more money. Hey, all you know, all press yeah. is good press. Yeah, right. It's getting those. Sometimes I up. feel like, like dudes like him and like Rush Limbaugh when he was alive. I had to think like most of the people listening are just ragers who are mad. Like you'd always see like liberal people posting what Rush Limbaugh said. I'm like, how do you know what Rush Limbaugh said? Who's listening to Rush Limbaugh? And it's like it's people's grandmas and then angry young liberals coming to Nebraska. I uh, oh yeah yeah no I I. I did a big political fundraiser actually when I first moved here and um one of the, they invited one of the fucked up senators everyone hates Don Bacon arguably one of the best names in politics but he's a piece of shit sure. Not, but um he thought he accepted the invitation was going to come and I was supposed to debate him and I really wish it happened cuz I would have fucking put some <laughs> shit on him but um at that he didn't show up but at that fundraiser one of the comedians actually made a funny joke about rush limbaugh and it was like he was listening to like people still play his shit like there he's rerun all the time and he's like ah, fuck i'm gonna fuck his joke up but it was like something along the notion of like how like unprogressive do you need to be for like reruns of something you said 10 years ago still need to be relevant to like what you're thinking it was like so, it was you know what i'm getting at like it was like how the yeah. fuck do you, like, is it still like, i'm gonna listen to political you? political conversations from 10 years ago right like this I mean, guy's right bill clinton is a piece of shit i, I even i even saw a comedian like just doing like an assessment it was like i was just watching a thing about uh you know they were like this is what they said it was like a facebook says like i just watched an episode of tough crowd from like 2003 and they were talking about the mexico border border security uh peace in the middle east and like something else that's like still going on and i was just like damn dude we haven't fixed any of that shit like, any of that it's shit. like it's all just been talking points like i'm just you know 
I'll take 9-11 jokes again at this point. As long as I don't have to hear another comedian be like, man, COVID, huh? Be like, it was three uh-huh. years ago. If I hear another pandemic joke, be like, first of all, I know it's still happening in other places. It It's not happening in Nebraska anymore. If I see a mask, I'm like, what is that person? What are they doing? <laughs> that person is robbing a bank. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm back to that mentality when people like first started wearing bandanas and I was like, why is everyone a train robber? There's also still like shows where it's just like must show proof of vaccination. I'm like, are you really? <clears throat> like, I mean, you should be vaccinated, but like if we're a little past all that, right? None of, them, none of them ask for proof anyway. I think didn't we, didn't we already prove that you didn't need to do that and the anti vaxxers are kind of right about that? <laughs> I mean, I got vaccinated and I'm yeah, fine. I did too. I just, you know, I just can't think good anymore. Yeah, right. My left foot doesn't work, you know, just normal stuff. <laughs> Got that long COVID, the sleepy toes. <laughs> oh, man, it's just, you know, it is what it is. And yeah. just go out, my advice to comics is just go out and, like, speak your truth. And my the best advice I ever got is Bill Hicks. It's like, don't try to have funny opinions. Just present your opinions in a funny manner. And just be yourself. That's also what he said. Yourself. If you, if you yeah. can be yourself, you control the supply and demand. No one can be you but you. There's only there's only one you. You mm-hmm. have you've cornered the market on that. And he is one of those people that I thought sucked before I did comedy. And the more yeah. I did comedy, I was like, this man needs to be in a statue in every town square like that part about like just plastering on a fake smile and having to get on the plane and just like trudging through this shit like one more time one more time i'm like man i've never felt some i've never felt more seen in my life than a guy wearing this cowboy hat and a fucking you know buster (laughs) and i think yeah he kind of gets lost too it's just like even when he was even when he died early yeah, but even when he was, like, doing, like, you know, overtly sexual stuff, it was always making fun of himself, and that was that was what was so brilliant about it. It was always, like, yeah. if it was stuff that would be offensive, it was always pointed at him and not at someone else. Uh, and and then, you know, what was weird is he did all that stuff in the 90s about the first Gulf War, and then, you know, he died, and then the second Gulf War, and it was all, like, you could have just lifted his material. He could have just redone it, you know, you know, two decades later or whatever yeah um, i mean that's a lot yeah. of people i mean i saw that looking uh going back and watching a lot of cat williams like during yeah. covid like he was calling about pandemics and like shit like that like three <laughs> specials ago and i was like man this motherfucker was clairvoyant you know yeah. like, certain people they just know like they just know and we don't listen you know but like we'll definitely glorify them once they're dead we love yeah. to do that. Once they can't have any more opinions, then we can like sift through them and be like, well, this one's good. That's why all my, the only people that I, uh, that are, they're like, who are your heroes? All my heroes are dead. I don't have to worry about them like yeah. fucking something up or, you know, like yeah. Brett Favre suddenly like ripping off the state of Mississippi for millions of dollars or be like, four years ago being like man harvey weinstein is just like who i want to be when it comes what a to producer me. he's just yeah, well, out there <laughs> just amazing eye for talent that's who i really look up to i never say i look up to anyone who's still alive it's just it's like, tough oh. with comics i had a, yeah. you know a few uh with the delia thing unfold i had a few people like didn't want to like accept that i'm like you can still think his shitty comedy is good i guess but like <laughs> just accept that he's a monster <laughs> same with like there's a here's this is a perfect like at almost end story there's a venue that i hate here uh i don't go to the mic anymore um but um they have a couch in the back and there's a painting of cosby as a clown yeah i hate it i've, I've uh. stealing it and uh painting a different thing and replacing it um but uh, I found out from the owner, they didn't put that up until the allegations came out. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Get, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. So. It's so weird. I, yeah. I don't understand. So like, funny. I don't, I don't understand it with anyone. It's just like, yeah, if someone, if I liked something that, and that person was shitty, I just stopped buying their stuff. I stopped watching their stuff. I don't understand what's so difficult about it. Like, And Bill Cosby, yeah. you talk about someone like, early influences like his stuff where he like all his shit about his childhood that stuff is hilarious like that's the yeah. first stuff i remember as a young person like crying myself to tears it was so funny i haven't listened to bill cosby i don't miss it it's just like you just let it go i don't understand 
why you would have such an attachment to it and no nah, like when that shit all like leaked i remember greg fitzsimmons was like doing his set to like take the jokes back and i was like everyone just stop yeah everyone just, just stop go throw his shit out or whatever you yeah. gotta do because like, like i remember Louis ck and like people like booking in a rush to book him it's like you know what there are so many comics out there who are probably just as funny and just need a break and aren't awful people why don't we just elevate those people? Well, he's and... he's safe again because Louie picked the perfect time to come back because all those young, hot open micers that idolized him when he was the shit are now pretty substantial, famous podcasters that can um, reemerge yeah. him and highlight him and uh, stroke his fucking ego to death. Like, Louie has to humble himself and hang out with, like, you know, Giannis Papas now and shit like that and not, like, I don't know, fucking... Um... <laughs> fucking like famous illuminati people but, yeah, yeah. but but they'll hold him up they'll hold him up forever because he was their yeah. little god so it's like uh i mean he just won a grammy he's not going anywhere i mean i remember yeah. cosby like being like just probably joking like with his wonky eyes saying he was going to go on tour in 2023 and comedians being like be honest would you want to open for him and people being like yes and i'm like if i'm friends with any of these motherfuckers please unfriend me like right now if you are that pitiful where you yeah. go open for cosby knowing what you know and like thinking that that would be good for you <laughs> it's just it's yeah. it's just, oh this would be great for me all these yeah. people comedians will overlook so I many mean, it's a atrocities if they can like, get a spot out of it they could literally be looking at like a genocide in darfur and being like but i can do five right and they're like, yeah, you're good. Yeah, you can do five. Uh, it doesn't pay, but if you it yeah. doesn't pay, but if you do all the marketing for it, you can do ten minutes. It's like, yeah, yeah, okay. it, it doesn't pay, but if you uh, it's like, if you, uh, if it's you steal some of the it. MREs when no one's looking, I won't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> you get a free MRE ticket. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it's just like I mean that's part of it too for me. It's just like free MRE ticket. When I I feel like people, yeah. Pe <laughs> People get into comedy and they're just like, I don't want to work a nine to five. I just want to do my own thing. And it's like, but the first thing to do is line up and be like, I hope that I can get booked by, you know, this chain comedy place that I can just travel around the country and opening for people at, you know, whatever the funny bone or like, just, just go do your own shit. Like that's the amazing thing about the world we live in is with, with the, the way we have access to media, the way we have access to cameras. Yeah. You can go set up your own shit. You can market your own shit. You can do it yourself. And is it going to be harder? Yeah, but it's going to be more satisfying. And you're not going to have to be in the green room with some guy who's 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 a sexual sexual assaulter. I don't know what the verb is for that, but you know, a sexual assaultist. Um, yeah, I don't know. And you could just do it yourself. Yeah, like why why are you so intent on feeding the comedy club system? People like feature acts make the same today that they did in 1984 because if you want ask for more money, they'll just get someone who's worse than you to replace you. Yeah. Also, like. If you think it's beneficial to like do a 10 person bringer at your local chuckle hut, just remember you can get your 10 friends to just come to your own show and keep all that money and not give yeah. it to Bob. I would just ask for, yeah. would just ask for a percent of, percentage of the bar. I'd get 10% of the bar. I'd make, you know, for an open mic, I'd make between 50 and 100 bucks if we had a good night. But I also got to the point where I drank free. And then yeah. uh, this one place would also let me eat free, even if I didn't have a show. So I'd be like, if I wanted to go out, I'd just That's go there. Awesome. And, you know, I used to like, have stuff like that back right when I drank, but I don't drink anymore. So now I have to just put sweet, sweet cash in my gas tank, you know? That's once, fine. Yeah. Once people couldn't hold those sweet drink tickets over my head anymore, I'm like, it's mozzarella sticks or I'm not doing it, bro. All right? Like, <laughs> let me on stage. I'm going to need some food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, feed a comic show. So the feed a comic open, open mic, please yeah, show up. People I, try and I, buy I, merch before we like everyone had like Venmo or like those square readers. I and if yeah. they only had cards, I'd be like, just buy me a shot. That was financial <laughs> gains back then. I'd be like, just buy me an alcohol. Now I'd be like, oh, let's let's go get that debit card. Let's go find it. Yeah. Let's create and, a cash app account for you. Then once you have kids, it's gonna be like, could you just like uh you know I mean, just bring some diapers or you know, yeah, some right. Food or shit. Do you have any uh, Gerber <laughs> products like on you? It's like a canned food drive just for you. Yeah, I, I, uh, I just was reminded, son. I think this is the perfect uh, bow to put on this. You were talking about the whole yeah. like, when do we get paid for this? 
I remember very vividly, I was at the Hartford Funny Bone doing their stupid open mic that they would make you sign up for at like 3 p.m. Then it would start at like 8 at the fucking mall. I was with my friend Mike Schustock. He was the host of it. This guy, this guy Ryan, comes up to us. It was like his second time ever doing comedy. And he goes, when do I start getting paid? And me and Mike <sighs> laughed in his face so hard. Now, let me take you through a quick the past 10 years for all three of us in that story. (laughs) Mike moved to New York City and quit comedy immediately and just does catering shit now. (laughs) Ryan actually got a very successful podcast, then radio show on iHeartRadio, like fucking a year later, said the N-word at one of my shows, got really big on social media, fell off, and now doesn't do comedy anymore. And then you have me, the only one still doing comedy, but I live in Nebraska. and that's <laughs> <in Canada. laughs> So that's what happens. Just give it. When do we start getting paid? Soon. But let's just see if we're all still around in 10 years. Yeah. When was the last time you asked to get paid? You know, you know, <laughs> com- comics just sit around waiting for someone to offer them money. It's like do, if someone asks you to do a show. Yeah, people be like, I never get booked. It's like, I'd be like, how often do you put yourself out there? Like, even 14 yeah. years in, most of my bookings come because I'm going to be in this area. <laughs> like, yeah. so can I do your show? Like, I still have to put myself, like, yes, I get shows, like, because people just, like, ask me. But also, like, a lot of those aren't far away. But that, you yeah. know, that takes a, that's, like, r- a rarity. Like, people being like, I want to book. Like, if that ever happens, it's, like, three in a row and then not for six months. <laughs> Right, 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 right. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, is it time to book Brian again for a year? All right, let's get it out of the way. <laughs> nah. Yeah, it's like, I went on stage for five minutes. Yeah. I, uh, I said some completely offensive stuff, and no one's giving me money yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, when do I get my Netflix special? Yeah, I just quoted Kanye <laughs> for five minutes, and no one's going to pay me for this? This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been absolutely amazing. I had too much fun. We definitely got to do a part two of this sometime soon. But do you have any, like, plugs? Where can people find you? Do you want people to find your shit? Like, no, what, do not, do not me look for it. me. Do not look for me. I don't need to be found. But I would say, if uh, probably not your audience, but if you want to be a good ally or you're a trans person, you just want to, like, Here's some That's advice. My audience. <laughs> yeah. Listen to my listen to my podcast, uh, Girl Dick with Ted Cruz. Uh, there's no Ted Cruz in it, but it's funny if you search on Spotify for Ted Cruz podcasts, a lot of times our podcast comes up right next to his. And we That's use the amazing. Same, we use Name the same alone. picture. Yeah, we use the same picture and font as his podcast, so it looks like the same podcast. Oh, that's fucking yeah. funny. And we had someone Honestly, give us one star because I think they thought it was a Ted Cruz podcast. You told me you had this podcast a while ago, and I'm not going to lie. I thought you were kidding. That's because that was my that was our one joke the whole time was like, yeah. we should start a podcast where we interview the local. I have one of those. It was 2008, so it's not like it's today. Yeah, but, I've had a few podcasts. I mean, yeah. this is one right now, but like yeah, literally. I interview like, all the local comics, and it's like. So okay. funny. I love yeah. it. Well, make sure you definitely find Lilith's podcast. It's not Ted Cruz's podcast. If you find one that sounds like Ted Cruz talking, you've gone to the you've wrong gone place. gone too far. Yeah, you've gone to the wrong place. <laughs> if, it, if it doesn't say girl dick, it's not girl dick. Make sure you just... I think everyone should just Google girl dick every morning. Just wake up, type it in, see what happens. Click on feeling lucky. See what you get. You know, you'll get it. <laughs> Lilith, that, thank that, you, thank you so much. This was amazing. I had, I had a blasty blast. Yeah, it was great talking to you too. Fine, great to finally meet you. And uh, yeah, if you I know again, we did it. Yeah, I'm up for it. And if I'm ever in Lincoln, I'll come. I'll do five minutes of one of your. Oh shows. God, wait till I move somewhere else. Then we'll do a show together. <laughs> Probably safer for me that way. Seriously. <laughs> All right.